Hi, it's Roland Jones. This is another in a series of short videos on preference and fraudulent conveyance issues. This, uh, the issue that came up in this case is actually very important, especially for defendants. This is a, a bankruptcy case out of Michigan, 2011. In this case, the defendant uh, ships steel uh, to the debtor um, in the, uh, in the pre-bankruptcy period, uh, for a long period of time, 20 years, uh, the debtor paid the defendant, uh, a rather large, uh, amount of money during the preference period that are goes bankrupt. And the question is, uh, does the ordinary course of defense apply and protect the defendant from having to, having to return these funds? Trustee uh, contended, the, the issue I'm going to focus on here is the trustee's contention that because um, the defendant received a wire uh, in, in this amount during the preference period, um, rather than a check, which was the usual mode of payment, that this was enough to take it out of the, out of the ordinary course. Um, and uh, the trustee pointed out correctly, this is the first wire uh, that this defendant ever got. Uh, they were doing business for a long, long time. They always got paid in check. And all of a sudden, right before the bankruptcy filing, uh, they get a wire. The defendant argued, hey, we didn't ask for a wire. We weren't pressuring uh, the, the, uh, this company to send us a wire. Um, and so this isn't a preference. In fact, the timing and the amount of the payment uh, was not unusual. There wasn't any collection pressure. It is, there was nothing unusual about it at all, except that uh, the debtor decided to uh, to pay by wire. Uh, so, so the court was faced um, with a pretty narrow issue. Of course, the court considered uh, the other arguments of ordinariness uh, put forth by the defendant. But one of the main issues the court focused on was: is a sudden wire uh, during the preference period? Is that by itself, if the transaction looks ordinary, is that enough? It, does that take it out of the ordinary course? The applicable section 547C to A. Was this the ordinary course or not? Uh, the court found that the wire transfer was made voluntarily um, by the debtor, it wasn't requested by the defendant, and uh, for that reason, uh, and the additional facts that other indicia of ordinariness was shown by the defendant, um, the court found that the wire that the wire payments uh, were not preferential. This is a really uh, important issue in a lot of cases. Uh, I personally had a number of cases where all of a sudden debtor changes its form of payment or maybe even changes terms. And the issue comes up a lot. What if the debtor ch changes the form of payment or terms and it's, it, it's not at the request of the defendant and there's no collection, there's no significant collection pressure. And, and so uh, this, is, this is an important issue to resolve. And this, th this court resolved this issue at the bankruptcy level uh, in favor of the defendant. So even though there's a sudden change, it doesn't matter. Uh, and the reason this is important is that typ typically any change uh, during the preference period uh, uh, in, in, in the mode of conduct between the two parties in the preference period is problematic uh, for the defense. And so the fact that there was you know, a major change, a major change from check to wire, which normally would be considered um, an important factor in favor of the trustee. Uh, despite that, um, the court still found uh, that the uh, transfers were protected by the ordinary course defense.